Welcome to ALS Lessons Online. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Alright, we're back with H2 Math question 8 of your um this whole part okay on, on your, your 2017, right? A levels paper 2. Alright, H2 Math A level paper 2. Alright, so this question we're gonna be looking at um this very interesting statistics topic called your correlation linear regression, all right? So this is going to be looking at things like scatter diagrams, your product moment correlation coefficient. All right, these are things that we're going to have to know for this topic, all right? So bear with me. Uh, we'll go through this question, what, how, how to answer it, and um, how we can basically score in this, these kind of questions, all right? It's quite simple. All right, so the first part, part A, is asking you to draw separate scatter diagrams, each with eight points. So you must have at least eight points. Um, I mean, eight points to be exact, okay, all in the first quadrant, which represents the situation where the product moment correlation between variable x and y is minus one, zero, between 0 0.5 and 0 0.9. All right, so this is a very classic uh, question that you need to know, okay, when your product correlations are equivalent to something, um, the scatter diagram is always going to look the same. All right, so in this case, uh, part one, when we look at the case when r is equals to the question is asking you for minus one. So minus one k essentially basically is trying to tell us that there is a negative correlation between x and y, which means that as x increases, y will decrease. So that means that it is essentially showing us a um uh, downward sloping uh, line, right? It's a it's a negative gradient. So you just need to draw the scatter diagram. Like it can be a best fit diagram, but there needs to be eight points. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. So something like this will do. Okay, this has to look as close to a straight line as possible because that's what we're trying to get. Okay. Next part is when they ask you r equals to zero. So when r equals to zero, it basically means that there is no correlation between x and y. So your points can very simply be all over the place. It can be anywhere you want. All right. So you can have one point here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So something like this will be fine. Okay, as long as your points are all over the place, okay, there isn't a correlation between X and Y. The last one would be when R equals to, or R is in between 0 0.9 and 0 0.5. Yep, so when this, when it's in between 0 0.5 and 0 0.9, uh, 0 0.9, okay, it will likely show a curve, right? It basically means that the product correlation, K okay, will likely in, be in between um, um, these two... Uh, values k okay, and it's in this case a positive which means that it kind of looks like a positive line um, but your r will have to be slightly more towards looking like a curve k okay, i mean your, your line k okay, will look more like a curve because your correlation force between these two is not one at the same time it's not zero so you can just draw something that looks a bit like a curve one two three four five six seven eight Alright, so something like this would be alright. Okay, this is roughly what 0 0.5 to 0 0.9 will look like when you have a product correlation. Alright, okay, so the next part, an investigation into the effect of a fertilizer on use of corn found that the amount of fertilizer X resulted in the average yield of corn Y given below, where X and Y are measured as such. Okay, this is a classic table that they will always give you in correlation linear regression. So draw a scatter diagram for these values. State which of the following equations where A and B are positive concerns provides the most accurate model of the relationship between X and Y. Alright, this question we're going to be looking at different curves, okay, which means that you need to first plot okay, in, your, in your graphics calculator this um, these values, right? So very simply, just press these values in your graphics calculator. Unfortunately, I don't have an app to show you that, so you're gonna have to press it in by yourself. Um, but it's quite simple. So just key this, uh, key these values in, and what you will get, okay, from your GC will look something like this. Okay, you would have a point that goes over here, which is zero seventy, and then you will have one up here, one up here something like this right you will be able to see it clearer in your gc okay so it looks something like this all right roughly okay then this point over here your last point will be 200 and 129 from your table so you're gonna have to find the four scenarios below and see which one of them looks the most similar to this um scatter diagram all right so the first case we're going to be looking at when y equals to ax squared plus b so y equals to ax squared plus b over here I don't know why I draw, drew a tick there. All right, why well, because a squared plus b over here is essentially basically going to be a quadratic graph, correct? Because of your x squared. So quadratic graphs, you know that it will just very simply look something like this. 
So this is when your y equals to x squared. Okay, but in this case, because of your plus b, as well as the plus, uh, as well as the a, you realize that you need to translate it, translate the graph by uh, b units in the positive y direction, as well as to scale it by a units in the x uh, uh in the y direction as well so when you scale it by a and by factor a as well as you translate it by b the graph will essentially move upwards to look something like this so this happens when you translate it and you scale it all right the next case is when y equals to a ln 2x plus b um so oh sorry this is scenario c right okay we'll go by order so this is a this is b okay so when y equals to a over x squared plus b what happens so this we can just plot a very simple graph of one over x squared so one over x squared will give you a graph that looks something like this with the asymptote going towards y equals to zero and x equals to zero as your asymptotes all right so when you um basically um add the b over here you plus b and you scale it by a units as well um, what happens is that the graph will essentially move outwards as well so it would have a new asymptote that goes over here and the new graph will look something like this All right so it will just move up okay then on the other hand okay so far these two don't look anything like the scatter diagram that we have plotted so we'll look at case c right when y equals to a ln 2x plus b All right in this case you're going to plot the graph of when y equals to ln 2x, okay, we ignore the a, the a, and the b, you will get a very nice graph that goes something like this, okay, that has an asymptote when x equals to 0, alright, sorry, I made a mistake right here, okay, this should be x equals to 0 and y should swap, okay, so you have a case over here whereby x equals to 0 is going to be an asymptote, okay, but when you translate it and you actually um, scale it, okay, by a, and plus b okay what happens is that the graph will only look something that is similar but it will just scale upwards so it will still have the asymptote but it will just scale and look a bit steeper so this does not look like our scatter diagram because our scatter diagram over here it looks as though it has actually um, possibly cut through the y-axis or has somehow touched the y-axis but in this case it will never touch because of this asymptote that is caused by a long graph. So it will never touch, so we know that it is wrong. So there's only one other option left, which is going to be the last one. Y equals to a root x plus b. So let's first plot what y equals to root x will be. It looks something like a, um, like a, like a sideways quadratic graph, right? So what happens is that when you translate it by b units, and then you scale it up by a units, what happens is that the graph will look something like this. It will move up. So from here, you can clearly see that this looks just like your scatter diagram that you have plotted. Okay, but you can roughly see the shape over here. It goes something like this. So likewise, your, your y equals to a root x plus b over here will be the best model that can actually help to represent your answer for the scatter diagram, right? Which is why we will choose y equals to a root x plus b. All right, so then um, to answer the question, you can just say that therefore, Model D gives the most accurate uh, representation of the relationship between X and Y. Just something like this will be done. Okay, part two of this question. Part two is asking you to give, using the model you chose okay, in the previous part, write down the equation for the relationship between x and y. So we're looking at the, the equation and giving the numerical values of the coefficient state, the product moment correlation for this model, right? So this one is all down to your GC, right? You have to press in your graphics calculator, there isn't any other choice. And from the GC, you will find, okay, when you plot in these values, all right, what you will get is you have to remember, okay, that your L3, so you will have a table that gives you L1, L2. You have to always remember that you have to key in L3 because we are now using the curve y equals to a root x plus b. So we need to have y3, uh, L3, which will be basically root x, and use these values instead. 
All right, so from this, remember that now your X list is going to be L3. Your Y list is going to be L2. Okay, you have to use the new curve that we have just, the new equation that we just um, gathered as your new uh, regression formula. All right, so from here, you will get the answer. Um, it will look something like this in the GC. Y equals to A plus BX. You get A equals to 74.04787 dot dot dot. You get B equals to 4.182113. You get R square equals to 0 0.96207. And you lastly get R, which is going to be a product moment correlation, which is 9.80548 and so on and so forth. Alright, so from here, you can very simply just type in your values of A and B. You will get the answer whereby Y equals to 4.18, which is your B root X. Okay, remember that this, um, you are using, okay, uh, don't, I, mean, I mean, as in don't get confused, right, between the A and B over here as well as the A and B from your A root X plus B. Alright, you are just basically swapping the values around. So in this case, which is why 4.18, which is our B value, will actually take place over here, which is, some of you guys may see it as the A over here. Okay, so, sorry, don't get confused, right? So this A is basically your B over here, right? Because the A is essentially this AX over here. The B instead is A in your GC. So just don't get confused, okay? Make sure you write the correct things straight from your GC. And this, you would just add plus 74.0. So your R would just be 0 0.981, which shows that it's a very, very strong linear correlation. All right, which is why your last part, K okay, is just asking you to very simply explain. Part 3, you just need to say something along the lines of the product moment correlation. So the product moment correlation coefficient uh, between your two variables over here which is going to be root x and y is 0 0.981 which is close to 1. Alright, always remember to write this whether it's close to 1 or negative 1 close to 1. So hence, this implies that there is a strong positive, all right? So because we are looking at one, not negative one, linear correlation, or you can use relationship between root x and y for your model which is model d okay so if you want you can add on so therefore it will be reasonable as estimates k okay, or to estimate the value of y given x Alright, so then after that, your final part, which is asking you uh, to estimate the value of y when x equals to 189, right? So you will need to give a justification as to why 189 is possible. So since x equals to 189 is within the given data range, and this is hence an interpolation. Okay, ex extrapolation will be when it is outside of the given data range. So this would be reasonable. All right. If I'm not the question, then I ask you to state the value so you don't need to find it. Uh. 
give two reasons, right? Give two reasons why it would be reasonable to use your model. So you don't need to actually find the value. So these will be the two reasons. So the first reason being of the correlation, showing that there's a strong correlation. The second one would be that it is an interpolation. So that's why you can simply estimate what the value of y would be from x equals to 189. All right. So if not, that's all for this question. I think it's quite a simple question on correlation and linear regression. So go ahead and make sure you master this topic. It's very simple. The format is always the same. Draw your scatter diagram, plot into your GC, and then find the R value, and then you should be able to do the rest of the question quite simply. All right, so if not, that's all for this video. Okay, if you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a like. As well as subscribe to the channel, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything, and it really does help me out a lot. And if not, um, if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section below, or I will see you in the next one. All right, so if not, have a good one. Till then. Bye-bye.